on audio. Hey guys, welcome to Coding with Fun. Uh, today I'm starting a new streaming, uh, streaming series where I'll be working on a real world project called Shopping Manager. I will be using Express, MongoDB, and Vue.js for frontend. Let's see the new server. There are a few depend uh, dependencies that we will uh, import in this one. Uh, for example, I'm gonna use Morgan as well as uh, Mongols for connecting with MongoDB, but we will do it step by step. Let's just first uh, start running Express Server. Let's import it in, in this file. Let's create an app. Let's create this port variable. So if uh, process dot environment dot port, if it has a port, so basically when we will deploy it in the production, uh, environment variables has a value of called port by default. So it's eighty port. So if if uh, we are deploying it in a more complex environment and we might change the port, then we don't we need to make any changes right here. So that's why I'm doing this. And for current development environment, we haven't set this port variable in, uh, in process. So that's why it will use 5000. Just give it the port variable and let's just consider the message that. Okay. Started application success and HTTP. We just add the support variable here. I will just add a few scripts so it's a bit easier. So let's just hope it works. npm start. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, that should work. Should work. Oh, oh yeah, because we don't have any uh, responses for get, get request in that port. So let's do to that. App dot get in the root part. Just. Response to Welcome to the API for shopping manager. Yeah, it works. So we are getting this uh, JSON, uh, JSON format response. So that's really good. So application is working now. Uh, let me just install node one uh, because we I don't want to constantly restart the server right so the node one is a dependency basically it uh, will start your node server whenever you make any changes in the files so now I'll just install that one and it will be uh, dev dependency because we don't really want it in the production uh, Sorry, not in the production, but it's something that we will be using only the development during the development of the application. So that's why it's so. I will just update the script. So, if I make any changes in the index, let's say, yeah, it restarted service again. So, that's really cool. There are a few dependencies that we'll be using. Uh, it's one of them is Morgan. 
So basically, this console our different messages. It really helpful when we'll work, when we will be debug debugging this uh, application in the future. So let's just install this. I just open a new tab. Looks good. I will need to import the model first. A Morgan and this developer. Okay. So it should console out different a bit different uh, messages so let me just show you if I will make a request it it print out that what was the request and which path it was so that's really good we will also use a package called dotting NV oh, I spelled it incorrectly dotting NV so this package lets you import variables from .env file which we will be using pretty soon uh, we will be storing database passwords and all the stuff in this uh, file so that it's a bit secure way rather than putting it in your code just install this one And always uh, make sure that this uh, you import it at the top of your application because if you will if you will import this .env file after initializing this Express app, so it might conflict because sometimes you need you need these variables when this application starts, right? So that is the main reason. Do not forget to import it at the top of your project. That's all for now. We will also need a course library. Let's start working with the first route called login. Let's first work with okay. We will use Express Router for this one. Export this router. We will only accept a login route for uh we sorry, we will just use a post method for login route because basically a user will be posting a data for example a username and password and it will be a post request it won't be a get request so that's why i just choose post and we just right now we just respond it with it is a normal message that Okay. 
We will just import this route in the index file. I usually go with a path like this uh, API version 1 and then out. So we get a small case. The reason behind this is uh, if in the future they ask for a, a big change, so at that time we will just we can just add that new backend with version 2 and we can just modify our front end or we or if they have asked to ask to create a new one then we can just point the, that whole uh, new front end uh, to the version 2 api and and their old old products will still work with version 1 api so that's why i, I usually go with this uh, kind of path so that's all i think we need, uh, need it for now and as this is a post endpoint we will need a we can't do it from browser, so we we'll just use a tool called Postman. Okay. So let us make a request to the HTTP. How can I close this one? Okay, that's good. Login. and if we try to make a get request we should get an error cannot get it yeah so it should be post yeah that works let me just add some middlewares this create folder called middlewares and we just create a file called errors Yes. So here is what I have written in the past. So basically, uh, these are two different middlewares. Uh, I I have found this middlewares from a YouTuber called Coding Out with CJ, and he has created a tool called Express Application Generator. I guess. I think it's this one. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the one uh, he has created this uh, CLI tool, so which which uh, with which you can just generate an API starter kit. I should have used this one, I guess, but uh, I wanted to do it from scratch. And the starter kit, you can see that in this source code and middleware. Here is your, uh, here is those uh, error handlers and not found middleware so that's where i got an idea to write it that way okay so basically uh, first of all we have one middleware called not found handler and this will be used uh, if they don't find uh, if a uh, user has made a request to a path which doesn't exist in our, in our application and we are basically just responsible with that request route does not exist and we have this error handler function or middleware which will basically will be called whenever an error has been thrown from our application and it just responses with uh, responses with this uh, basic generic message it, it, it also uses this uh, node environment variable uh, so if we are running in the production we will just set this environment variable as a production and it uh, because of that it won't show this error stack so this is uh, so this is uh, a bit we are just securing it so we are not letting anyone say that where that exactly uh, error was occurred because this way they can find which uh, module we are using let me just create an environment example file so that we can keep track of all the environments So it will be production. Um, we also have 
and we will import this middleware in the index file Let's remove this. Let's move this one before before the auth route, and we we'll just dot use error hello device dot not found hello. So at this point. So now when we make a wrong request. We should get a JSON response. Yeah, with the error code message, and yeah. we'll just start working in the in the script to create a user at first. Uh, means whenever the application runs in production. For that, we create a file called dbjs. This will be used con to connect to, uh, to the database. So we need another variable called Mongo URI. Production database URI. So basically this is a kind of a URL, a special URL. So where a, your application connect to your MongoDB database. That's something we will we will be changing in the production. So I just write this file. Also, uh, we will need a library called Mongoose to talk with our MongoDB database. It's uh, this library is not the simplest one, but it is uh, pretty good. I, I liked it. Uh, I have used it in the, in the past, and I really liked it. So that's why. I usually go with this one. Let's call this as a TP. We also go with we will either use environment or mongo QR or if it doesn't exist, which is in this case, then we will just use localhost MongoDB URL and I will just do a shopping manager database yeah so that's all we need for URI we just connect it to the database And there is few functions like use new URI parser, true, use identify topology, true. And we will just console it, uh, we'll just console log so that we can we get an idea that we have uh, successful connected with the database. And if we get any error by any chance. We will just log out the error. Oh, I forgot to add it. And we will also exit it. We will exit the application because this whole API works on the database connection. And if it isn't connecting with successfully, uh, it should there should it shouldn't be online by any chance. So that this is why I'm exiting it this line okay. and we just import it in our index file we will connect it to database right at this point db don't get connection so if you if we will go to the console log we can see the message that it successfully connected to the database. 
that's all so let us start working on this script um, so basically what we want to do is we will make a query to database and see if a user exists there and if a admin account is if admin user does not exist in the database then we will create a create it and use a default password for that we will need to create a user's database in the mongodb so that's what we will do we use the folder and we will need a schema and model We will do const uh, user schema it should be new schema i guess but yes to be sure yeah we will be creating a new object scheme so a user will have a username which will be type of string A minimum length of I guess three and max length of 12 characters I'm just okay let's go with 15 I guess yeah according to the store names I think 15 would be a better choice and we also want to trim it so that we remove we make sure that we remove spaces from front of uh, from beginning and ending we will also need a it will be also unique we don't want two users with the same user id and match the value with this project so basically this project allows uh, a to z uh, as capital letters small letters zero to nine digits and underscore because usually they like to use underscore instead of space that's why i do that one we can add a dot as well but i think i'm just gonna ignore it for now for this one and the most important one will be uh, it is required field for password it's so again type string require true and I will make sure that the timestamps true. So when I set the timestamp as true, so it will add a automatic. The MongoDB will automatically add created at and updated at uh, columns. And I don't need to update those values because it will like it's an automatic thing. Uh, it's kind of a MongoDB feature. So let me let me just export this schema as a model we will the name database as usual and we will send the user schema for the database so what we can we just import this user model first we just name it as user only First, we'll make a query. Uh, Find one. With username is admin. I'm gonna add a admin username because i think they want to change it eventually and i don't want to create an account with with an admin username it's it's pretty easy to guess right so that is the main reason this is to admin username come in 
we will do the same for password so now we will just use admin ad ad in developer environment but i will make sure that i will change it in the future i will just this just random, random characters So store this this value in call admin user. Okay. So if admin, if uh, if we do find an admin account, then we we'll just console .log admin account already. We will create a new a new user. So let's just create a new new user. Oh, it should be like this new user. Username would be from environment variables. Still need to make some changes. For example, I don't want to uh, use the same. Uh, I don't want to pass the use password without hashing it. So we will need to create a another. We will need to just hash this password before we enter in the database. So for that, I will just create a lib folder which will contain all different uh, basic libraries or a script that we will be using throughout this application. For encryption, we will use the bcrypt. It's a it's a library. Uh, it's been out for a while now. I have used it in the past, and it was a pretty good experience. So that's why I have been using it almost my every project. Just install it. So it's installed now. Let's go to the file. Called. We will just import a hash function from this library. And we will create a function called hash password, which will take a input of password, which will be I think just a string, and we will just hash it before making any changes. It will make uh, it will need a uh, number for uh, salt rounds. Again, I will use a environment variable for this and I will also make sure that it is a number otherwise if it doesn't exist then it will by default use 10 for now I will just export this hash function and in the for when we will be working on login route i will add a function called check hash i guess something like that and i will just write that code here i guess yeah let's let's just skip it this way password let's call let's import that file here
script dot hash password we will pass value of this and then so I have some async function we will be getting a user from data oh we will get a hash password with that we will use we will create a new user oh what am i doing okay yeah that would and we will use this hash password new between user dot save At this point, we have saved a user in database, and I will just make a console log statement that successfully created an account. Or oh, if I we get an error, I will just throw it. Uh, We will log out the error and we will exit the application. I will do the same when we get any error from hashing the password. It should be like that. So at this point it should create a admin account whenever application starts if a user with admin username does not exist i think it won't work because we might change it i will just go with this and do i have yeah so let's just import this file let me just stop this server and I just want to make sure that it creates it. Uh, it creates the admin account properly. So I will import the file. Okay. I think I will need to import that around here because at this point we will have a connection connection to the database and once we have that connection well, after that we can make a database query that if admin account exists or not so this do require uh, I should be script and create a new script so let's just run this application and it should create that admin account shopping manager users and did not return any results Let's make sure we are importing it properly. If it will use it, then skip inverting this and we should at least get, get this message. Let me just do the it is working I am reporting your application here do I need to export it as a function
Oh, okay. So the thing is, it is trying to connect it before our database connects to the server. Okay, I see. What's the issue here? Wait, let's press add. Okay. okay yeah we can use this events in the express application time i will pass the app instance we will get this in the app instance here and dot emit a event called data db collector And I will subscribe to that event here. Add on to be connected. We will input this file. It should resolve our issue. Why does it say that admin account already exists? Does it? Okay, let me just console out this admin user. Should we console log? Oh, it's pending. I see. We should await it for a while. So, await. We can just do, we can make this function async. Should be like this. Why does it fit? Oh, it should be password. So yeah, it is working, I guess. Yeah, successfully created an admin account. Yay! it's working so let's uh, make sure that it, it has been created in the database and here it is admin and password is hashed one that's all for now uh, if you have any questions feel free to drop it in the comment box see you soon